Hello everyone, and welcome back to a new episode of Prismata. Um, we're going to play a timed game against Masterbot, and um, I'll play a bit faster and ask you guys to try to keep up. We're still playing at 60 seconds per turn, which is a pretty slow time limit. Um, a fast game, like, uh, 45 is kind of standard, I think. Um, when the game was new, people played with 60 and 90 a lot. These days, like, a lot of people understand the game well enough that they can play it. 20, 30, 45. Um, I, I could play at 30, at 45. 30 felt a bit quick for me. There are people who play it like crazy fast, where you like clearly can't play the right strategy. But there are people who are like surprisingly good at Blitz, in the same way that there are chess players who are good at Blitz or whatever. Um, but I have not played nearly enough, especially recently, to do anything like that. So I'm just going to try a 60 second game against Masterbot. Um, and. Uh, See how that goes. And we'll play base plus five, so it should be relatively simple, but there's still a lot of depth uh, tactically. So this looks like a pretty green set. Uh, I don't know. These two are both very strongly in favor of being breach proof. Venge Cannon consumes your drones and converts them to attackers. Trinity Drone consumes your drones and converts them into higher health drones. So either of these can kind of work um, for saying don't. Go ahead, attack me all you want. Um, and so the question is, can anyone get uh, Arca going in time to defend against that kind of play? And I, I don't know. I'm inclined to say not. I'm going to just try to go for, like, Trinities and Venges, I guess. Tesla Coil is a, a very high-pressure attacker. Which works against enemies who are who depend on not being breached. So I'm hoping to say, you know what? Go ahead, come at me. Um, I'm just gonna convert all my drones real quick to either Venges or, or Trinity drones or something. And I guess it's gonna have to be. I I don't know what the Venge ru cannon rush strategy is. Like I know there is one. There's a, an efficient build that gets out Venge cannons in a hurry. But I don't know what it is. Venge cannons consume three drones when you build them, right? So how many drones do we have? Nine? Okay. So in in two turns we could convert our drones to Venges, I guess. Or in three turns. But I could do, like, I don't know. I feel like I need some more Trinity Drones before I commit to this. And Venges can also benefit from... You kind of, like, have no drones at that point, so you basically just have green. And they benefit from your green by creating extra attackers. Extra, well, single-turn, short-term attackers. Um... So I'm going to have six green next turn, right? Which is enough to convert six drones. So I kind of have one drone too many. But I don't have a good way... Maybe what I should do is this. Have like 11 drones try to get to four Venge Cannons? That seems pretty optimistic. You kind of want to convert all at once. How am I going to get 12 green? Well, if I do this, I'll have 7, and then the turn after I'll have 12. I guess. So I can convert a few drones this turn, and then the rest on the next turn. Build two Venge Cannons, he'll attack for two, overrunning, killing one drone. This this is clearly not a well-executed Venge Rush at all, and I think he's going to hold it off just fine. I don't remember how to do a Venge Rush. Uh, <laughs> um, so he's going to attack for two. I'll have four drones. But I want to have 
a multiple of three. So I could do this, but then I'll only have two drones. I could build another Trinity drone, I guess, but then I'm not really doing anything. Um, so what if I, like, force field? It seems kind of silly to, like, do something that lets me defend my drones when the whole point is to, like, convert them. But I think that's actually kind of an interesting idea. Ugh. I don't know. I, I clearly have way more m money than I need. I've done this quite badly. Um, build some engineers. Next turn... Ugh, I don't even know. The time pressure really gets to me. Like, I, I, I'm playing fine, but like, I, there's this timer. I don't know what to do. I'm executing a strategy I don't really know how to deal with, and the Trinity drones don't seem to fit into it very well. The force field is questionable. I guess I want to be able to build three drones next turn along with all this stuff. I don't know. We'll try this. Like, what else am I ever going to spend my gold on? Uh, Gauss cannons, I guess. So, let's see. I probably don't want to click my Venge cannons, because that reduces their health. Maybe I do. I need to pressure him. And having... Oh, no, I need my greens still. I see. Um, so, we'll Venge again. Build one, two more drones that I'll convert next turn. Uh, and then I'll have just Venges. And I'll build a Gauss Cannon. Okay. This isn't good, but it's like a play that's sort of consistent a little bit. And we're threatening a lot of pressure early on, and so the question is, can he withstand it or not? I don't know. I hope not. And we're now saying, go ahead, come on in, door's open. I'm not going to defend anymore, and I'm hoping that my high health green units can withstand all of the pressure. Right now he's threatening four attack, uh, which is not enough to... It's enough to kill my Trinity drone, but not enough to kill this guy, or these guys. Um, so I'm going to sacrifice some health on this to build more Gauss charges to threaten even more pressure against him next turn. Uh, I could spend my money on an Engineer. Is that good? Doesn't seem that good. I'd rather save it and try to build a Gauss Cannon next turn. Yeah, he killed my Trinity Drone, so I guess I should have known I was never going to be able to build a Gauss Cannon. Should have built my Engineer last turn. But I'll just keep clicking my Venge Cannons when I can, threatening as much damage as possible, and hope that he doesn't get to the point of being able to kill them in time before I'm able to overrun him. He killed my Gauss Charges there, I think. We'll just keep this up. Next turn I should be able to click two Gauss Cannons if I want. Or two Venge Cannons. Yeah, he's going to keep killing my Gauss Charges. That's interesting. I don't know which one of us is taking the lead. I think it's him. But I'm about to click two Gauss Cannons. Venge Cannons. So maybe he'll find himself unable to defend against all of these excess Gauss Charges. I don't think that's the case, though. I think he's doing okay. Oh, we breached him! We got in! We got past the door! We got him! Um, now, we got his drones. He can attack for six, which is enough to, if he wants, kill a Venge Cannon. What that means is I can sort of freely click one of the other Venge Cannons. It doesn't matter to me which one he kills. If one's at five health, having another at five health is no big deal to me. So I expect he'll resign next turn? Not yet, huh? I mean, we, we got into to, to all the soft and squishies. Um, 
In fact, I'll kill a Steel Splitter here so that he only has four attack and not five. That way he won't be able to kill another Venge Cannon yet. Yeah, I think we got him. There's no way he gets through all this. Right? The extra health on my Venges is going to be enough? I think. He has three attack, so we can make sure we don't lower any Venge Cannons down low enough to be uh, destroyed. And then, um, what do we want to do? Do we want to kill an attacker? Do we want to kill all his trinities? So he... Oh, we can't do that. We only have nine attack. So we kill a trinity and a steel splitter, I guess. Um, and I don't want to click any venge cannons here. He could kill one if I did. But on the other hand, I think that that would be fine. Because then he isn't killing these gauss charges and he takes even more damage. Like, if he... If he kills this Venge Cannon, he saves himself from two damage, but takes three instead. And I think that I'm at a point in the game where that's okay with me. We're threatening to actually destroy him. Oh, I can still damage units. Um, hit me up with this this guy, please. Okay, so he did kill the Venge. Can I afford to let him do that again? I'm not so sure. I think I might have been wrong to let him kill the Venge. Yeah, I'm gonna hold it and then only click it next turn. Because he sort of has to commit to attacking something with his three attackers. And if he attacks a Venge, I can click the other Venge. Yeah, I like that idea. Yeah, so he concedes. It's very, like, kind of close. Neither of us has very much, but um, he only has three attack, which means if I click this Venge, he can kill one of them, but not both. Actually, he only has two attack, so he, he can kill this one specifically, which means I guess I could click it as well, threatening one more damage. That's not... Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't, doesn't, doesn't matter, does it? I mean, he's conceded. I could just claim victory, but I want to make sure that what I do is, like, correct. I guess it doesn't matter. Next turn, we're attacking for at least six. He'll have eight health. If I do this, then next turn, we're attacking for at least three for the same amount, huh? At least six. Three, and then he can kill two of these guys. We're attacking for seven. Not much difference, huh? All right, I think this is still better, though. Oh, no, it's not. No, it's fine, it's fine. Because there's actually, like, there's a way I could still lose this game if I wanted, <laughs> uh, which is I could click this and do a little more extra damage. Why would this result in me losing the game? He'll have lost his last cannon, and I'll have a cannon left. I can do damage, right? But his Blast Forge has three health, and it regenerates that health. So I need to make sure that I can do three damage all at once, twice in the future, in order to kill these Blast Forges. So, so if I do this, he'll be able to kill the Venge Cannon, and then I won't be able to kill both of his Blast Forges. But this way, he can't quite kill it this turn, and... Uh, then I'll have a Gauss Cannon and a Venge Cannon both left to overrun his Blast Forges. So it really is a very close game. Um, where just like the thinnest of margins is what kept me alive here. I don't know, whatever, we'll just... I could have popped the Venge Cannon last turn, I guess, and won a turn earlier. Whew. So a... Poorly executed Venge Rush beats Masterbot. Fair enough. Okay, and we got, like, all these... So, like... The new player experience for this game is that there's, like, a whole enormous pile of, of units in the Advanced tab, and, like, asking someone to learn all the new units every game is, like, hard. 
Because, like, there's hundred, over a hundred of them, I think. I don't know. Probably multiple hundreds. Um, and if they're new to you every game, because you don't know any of them and you're choosing five out of a hundred, it's very overwhelming. And so what they do is they, they limit the number of new units that get, of advanced units that get exposed to you until you've played a few games, and then they introduce some new ones, so you sort of have time to learn them. And we've just unlocked Thermite Core and Auric Impulse. Um, and we got this, like, micro-transaction currency for, like, upgrading cosmetics on your units we got as well. That no, doesn't really matter. All right, uh, let's do one more game against Masterbot here. Um, try to go through it pretty relatively quickly and have, like, a half-hour episode for a change instead of, like, an hour-long episode. What's this all about? Looks like Big Blue? Yeah, there's not really anything here to threaten Big Blue. So I'm going to try to get a large number of Blast Forges and eventually build this Odin. Um, which... Oh, he only has four now! He used to have five uh, defense. That's interesting. I wonder why they changed him. Anyway, so I'm going to try to build big defenders. The Doomed Mech and Odin. Uh, and since I can do that, I'll have I'll be able to defend a lot every turn, and so I'm saying I'm going to build a bunch of drones. Um, now my opponent is threatening to build like a steel splitter or a shredder or something to attack me. Kind of stinks, but um, I'm just going to keep going. He's getting this engineer. Oh well, the engineer served his purpose and enabled me to build a bunch of drones. Next turn I'll build a wall, and I'll keep building blast torches and drones and try to get out some more advanced uh, units. Some higher blue. So now he's threatening to attack for two, but we can defend for two easily enough. What's the deal with Shredder? It's, a, it's like Steel Splitter, but cheaper, and it has more health. Right? Sounds great. The downside is it has what's called Frontline. Um, it's a blocker, but your opponent can choose to assign damage to it, so you can't like really use it to absorb very well. Um, so I kind of need another Blast Forge, at least one. Now if I build another Blast Forge now, I guess I could just put down the Odin next turn. That seems pretty alright to me. I could even build a drone and then put down an Odin next turn. The problem is my opponent sort of threatens to attack for... 4 next turn, which would kill all my engineers leaving me kind of awkwardly placed to defend. So I think rather than a drone, I would rather build an engineer. Um, because I plan to be defending with it pretty soon. On the other hand, I guess a drone is strictly better, right? Because next turn I'll defend with these engineers, and then worst case I have to hold back a drone. But it's harvested for one gold by then anyway. So it's, it's sort of strictly better than an engineer in that I'll be able to harvest at least one gold for it, and then if I want, I can use it as an engineer anyway that costs two. Um, or really, of course, it cost three, but had, uh, gave itself a refund. Or gave me a refund, or, or whatever. So I'm sort of, like, awkwardly placed here in that Odin, when you attack with him, consumes a Steel Splitter to attack for a bunch. Um... I don't exactly want to consume a Steel Splitter, but I would love... Like, if I just attack with all my Steel Splitters, I kill one Engineer. If I attack with none of them but my Odin, I get to kill a Shredder, which is way higher value. And I think I will now hold back this drone like I was worrying I might have to do. Build a Doomed Mech as sort of an intermediate defen intermediate sized defender. A couple Engineers to uh, serve as the buffer to get flexible defense next turn, and I have five and a blue left, so let's build a Shredder. I'm going to try not to attack with Odin in the future. Um, try to use him as my defense. Well, I don't know, actually. I have the Doomed Mech. He's a more efficient defender than Odin is. So, in the old times, when Odin cost five, or had five health, it, was, it would be clearly right to defend onto the Odin. Now it might be better to attack with the Odin, I'm not sure, and defend with the uh, Doomed Mech.
Hang on. I can get four attack to kill his Shredder without attacking with the Odin. And then attacking with the Odin, like, just kills two Engineers. Three Engineers. I guess that's probably worth it, actually. Uh, and we'll just keep building Doomed Mechs. And I'll build, like, a Steel Splitter to start replacing these ones that we're killing. <laughs> um, and another Engineer. Sure. He has more drones than me by, like, four, but I have the Odin. I don't know, that might not actually be worth it. I need to be attacking with the Odin, I guess. So Odin is, in a way, letting me spend six gold and a blue to get four attack. Is that good value? I think it is. But I kind of want more Steel Splitters. Uh, so I'll build those and uh, another Shredder. I don't actually want to build a Shredder, because my opponent can attack that quite efficiently and prevent me from getting much Absorb on my uh, Doomed Mechs. So I think I'd rather just build a wall. He's going into green. Why? And blue. How exciting. So I'm holding one Doomed Mech back to defend, because he's very efficient at defending with 5 health. And then I think I'll just build another Doomed Mech and another Steel Splitter. Like, I'm going to just continue doing this until he's ready to disrupt me. And build an Engineer to replace one that we might somehow lose. You'd like at all times to have two Engineers, because then you have a very f you're able to defend... Uh, if they attack for, let's say, four... You don't want to defend wall onto wall, which is the same as them attacking for five and you lose wall onto wall. You'd rather be able to defend engineer onto NG NG onto wall in that case. So I, I try to make sure that I always have at least two engineers, unless there's some other stuff going on. Uh, right now he's threatening to attack for ten, which is four here and six on these. So we're sort of losing both walls this turn, probably, if he attacks for everything. Oh, he got his Odin out. Well done. Interesting. So he sort of is getting 5 health out of this Doomed Mech for free, plus 4 health out of this guy for free. So he has 8... 8 attack doesn't do anything to him. I have to attack for... 9 attack doesn't do anything to him. So my Odin right now is only actually attacking for 2, not for 4. And I don't want to sack a Seal Splitter to attack for 2. So I'll just build... Um, well, I can attack for 2. But it doesn't do anything, right? So I'll just, uh, I don't know, build an engineer. What am I going to do with 10? Right, we said these walls onto the doomed mech. If he attacks for everything. I'm worried, though. He has a Tarsier. He has an Odin. Ah, but he's not attacking with the Odin. Interesting. So I think the main advantage that I have over him is that I have a longer train of doomed mechs. I can, for a, like, remember it was really good for him that turn that he had a doomed mech going away that he could afford to defend with without costing himself anything? He doesn't have as many turns like that as I do because I've built more doomed mechs and they're sort of coming off duty regularly. Um, so right now, my... Odin attacking is actually useful. How much is he really attacking for? Let's say he doesn't attack with the Odin. He's attacking for 4, 6. If he does attack with the Odin, he's attacking for 10, right? Oh, 4, 5, 7. So I predict he won't attack with the Odin. Maybe I should do this. Attack with my Doomed Mech, who's off. Who's dying anyway. It sort of costs me, maybe, costs me at least two engineers, maybe more. 
if he chooses to attack. And it only costs him two engineers to attack anyway, so maybe it's not that great now that I think about it. On the other hand, it makes it more awkward for him to defend. Does it? No. Okay, we'll do this. I don't know. Uh, and it's probably time for another engineer. Yeah, see, look, he's not attacking with anything. Um, because he can see that my doomed mech is protecting me from most of the damage. So I'd like to just build Steel Splitter Doomed Mech until the end of my days. Um, and I think I'm going to stop building Engineers and see if I can sneak in a drone next turn uh, to start gaining an advantage uh, on him. Hang on, is it useful to... What the heck? He built a Zatron. That's kind of scary. Is it really worth it for me to attack with this? He has a Doomed Mech going off duty. So right now we're attacking him for five... Eight meaningful damage. So yes, all the damage we're doing is meaningful, which means the four additional that we add is also meaningful. So I'll do that. Yeah, the Odin killed a wall and an engineer. And now suddenly I'm having to build actual defenders, I think. We're attacking him for 10. Which means he has to lose at least some of his attackers, right? And if I attack for 14, he really has to lose some defenders. Some attackers. How much, though? Um, 1... Five, he has nine left, three steel splitters, so he's actually attacking for 18. 18 is how much I have to defend against. So I'll just build wall wall steel splitter drone. Um, and it looks like he's going to be able to breach me, but he can't. He has to lose some, some attackers to stay alive here. Um, I, yeah, yeah. Wow, he's attacking, well, he's threatening to attack for 21, but he's actually going to attack for less. That's fine. He's only actually going to attack for 14. Great. So we'll attack with all the, one of the Doomed Max, all the Steel Splitters. And I think we should hit him with the Odin. I'm starting to worry about my Steel Splitter supply, though. Does he have to lose any attackers this turn? No. He's not really defending with any attackers. So I'm going to hold back a drone here just so he can't threaten to overrun me. I don't expect him to, but I'm actually starting to worry about his conduit and animus. Like, he's getting efficient attackers now. Maybe I should have transitioned into that a while ago? He's also droned way more than I have noticed. I think he's actually going to get me here. He, he diversified out of blue uh, at a time when I didn't realize it was useful to do so. But maybe, maybe he's wrong. I hope he's wrong. I can't breach him, right? Yeah. We're out of Steel Splitters. And actually, he doesn't have to lose any attackers if he doesn't want to, right? Yeah, so I should I should not offer him a breach. <laughs> um, cancel the steel splitter, build a wall, and hold back a drone. Yeah, suddenly like I'm way behind. He recognized when I did not. Uh, the importance of doing something other than just Odin and Doomed Mech. And now he's gonna murder me. Like, I'm just, uh, pretty toast. I have a bunch of attack that I'm threatening for, but I can't actually attack with all of it. Because he would completely destroy me. Yeah, I think we're dead here. Um, 
Yeah, he, he clearly believes that he's building like a whole bunch of attackers. He's got doomed mechs lined up till kingdom come. Yeah, we're totally dead. Well played, Masterbot. You got me. So that was that was an instructive uh, lesson, I guess. Let's try. I don't know how casual ma matches work. You know what? Actually, though, I'll just let you look at the screen and then say, "Stay tuned next time," and uh, we'll try to play against the human. Although I understand there's bots in this queue as well, so you you can run into like master bot on the ladder just to see like what's your rating. Uh, like to 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 get help Masterbot keep an accurate rating and and support when there's like not that many people in the ladder you can still find a bot who's your level even if there's no humans your level playing anyway we'll do that next episode thanks for watching and i'll see you next time